Hi everyone and welcome to another video and today we can finally talk about the RX 6600 XT performance. Now I have got the Strix to review for you today. Now AMD sent me this Strix and what that does mean is I have to review this one today but then afterwards I'm allowed to show you the and talk about the other cards. It's a bit of a strange situation but uh, that's what NDAs are, so we have to do as are told. So today is the Strix. Now the MSRP, or the SEP as AMD call it, which is what they are saying is the base price for the cards, is £329. And that means that you're going to get a few base models around that sort of price, and then the prices go up depending on the cards themselves. So obviously the higher end ones like the Strix are going to be more expensive. I have just had a hint from a retailer that these are going to be kicking around the £500 mark. So a fairly big difference between the two, especially on launch day and especially on a card that they are saying is going to be aimed at the high FPS 1080p market. Now, uh, there was a few trolls that came out from underneath the bridge when I mentioned this online about, oh, 1080p is so out of date and blah, blah, blah. But what you need to remember is so, so many people, especially on Steam, are still playing at 1080p. The other thing to remember is we did say high refresh rate 1080p. So maybe those of you out there with a slightly higher spec monitor, maybe doing some frame syncing or that sort of thing, that's where this is kind of aimed at. Free sync, that kind of vibe. But if you're looking at high frame rate 1080p that does then give you the crossover point for decent frame rate 1440p which is why when the trolls were whinging about it it made me wonder whether they actually understood that the argument that they were having in the first place so let's get settled down we'll have a good look at the Strix I uh, will give you a broad range of kind of thoughts based on the Strix itself, but also the possibility of there being cheaper cards available below it as well. Uh, and we will discuss and go there forward. You do need to make sure you stay tuned for the conclusion as well, because we are going to have to have a, um, a chat about uh, MSRP. We are going to have to have a chat about uh, availability and things maybe not necessarily being quite so normal in the market avail you know, for purchasing. And also, can you find any NVIDIA, NVIDIA cards available at this moment as well? So, a fair bit for us to have a good old chat about. Get yourself comfy, get some biscuits, and you may even be able to pick yourself up an internet cookie at the end. The problem with MSRPs at the moment is like the SEP from AMD, that's going to be their suggested price. But it doesn't mean necessarily that all the graphics cards need to be that price. It's kind of a suggested hypothetical, we hope they can sell them for that kind of price. But with the fact that uh, many manufacturers are having to fly samples around the world, the price of even stuff like cardboard, it's... It's getting to the point where you kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt. Now, this isn't about this launch per se. This is about the graphics card industry as a whole. And having to make a video before a launch day when uh, we actually don't know how many of these cards are going to be available in stock. I think for me, the, 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 with these cards, if they're still in stock the day later, there was enough or more than enough for the launch. If they go out of date on the day, like that or within a few minutes as with others then maybe we are still struggling but you know only time's going to tell we have to live in a, a positive kind of way uh but like i said we do know that this or rather we do know that they are suggesting some of the prices to be from the 329 mark i also know that or pretty much have been hinted along the rounds of you know like listening at the water cooler that this is going to be around 500 pounds so there's a fairly big difference in price from a smaller lower end one to this but this is the premium asus I'm not making excuses i'm just trying to give a wealth of information and you guys can obviously make your mind up at home anyway and that is my doorbell so for a strix it's quite small there's not a massive amount of lighting on it as well considering it's meant to be one of the top end ones uh, and i will say the dual fans on it i did run it in performance mode but i run it in performance mode 
so that it gave the uh, best performance. Now the temperatures were very, very strong. It never really got hot. But I will say the fans on the graphics card did seem to spin up quite early. And for a dual fan, kind of larger fan, not particularly getting hot kind of scenario, I did find it a bit loud. Um, and I say a bit loud because you're all going to be saying to you now, well, how loud we need results. Let's just say it was noticeable and more noticeable than most of the cards that I've reviewed recently. It was a bit of an eye opener and I would say is a bit of a fly in the ointment as far as I'm concerned. Now, it's a very high end model. It comes with like nice software. It does follow the kind of Strix looks. It's the first of the Strix cards in reality that I've seen for a while that is noticeably smaller than all the rest. And they've obviously been doing that to try and keep the costs down. But if said retailer is selling it for 500 pounds, then that's obviously a bit of a, a bugbear. But I want to go more into that when we get to the conclusion, because I've got some performance to show you side by side. We've got some 1080p, we've got some 1440p stuff to have a look, loads of results. Don't forget you can go to the OC3D website to have a look at more and more. I think there's like 25 pages over there, I forget. And also, if you like this sort of stuff, like, share, do all of that stuff. I would be very appreciative, but performance. Okay, so into control. Now this is 1080p, you can see, with a fairly high refresh rate. So you can see 89, 86 frames per second at the top, meaning it is fairly high for a more entry level card. But in now comes 1440p. And the reason why I'm showing you these side by side is to show you that even though Control is an NVIDIA based, very stressful game, it's still playing with decent frames per second. Yes, it's below uh, 60 frames, but this is with it maxed out at ultra as we do all of our testing. So if you did want to increase the frame rate, you just make a few subtle changes to uh, some of the texture settings and you will be golden. Now, if we bring this up into the uh, graph itself, there you go, you can see the data. Yes, it is just below a 3060. But imagine some of the prices the 3060s have been lately and I will let you make your own mind up. Into Cyberpunk though, again, very stressful. Uh, Nvidia favoring game. Now you can see we had a dip there to 60 frames a second even at the 1080 res. So this is one to keep an eye on. This is definitely one that if you do want to go 1440 you're going to need to make some uh, tweaks so that it will run uh, slightly higher. But don't forget this is running at ultra with everything maxed out and that's something that you do need to keep in mind. But then as we go around the corner and the 1440 comes in it is above 30 frames per second there though. Now I know 60 is the golden number, but you do need to remember what I've just said about it being a very stressful Nvidia game and we're running at 1440p, so with it uh, ultra. So if you did want to tweak it, you can increase the frame rates. That's all going to be down to how you want it to play at home. And then when the graph comes up, you can do your own comparisons and pick it apart. Don't forget to pause into F1 2020, just to balance things out. Now the reason why I've done this, AMD game uh, loves the high refresh rates. So if you see this at 1080p, you could be playing this at with a 144 hertz monitor and having more than enough frames per second to actually be able to drive it because 144 hertz, yes, it's going to be kind of nice if you've got 144 frames per second to feed it with though. But then we come into 1440p and you can see the frames per second are still really strong. Now this is in its um, ultra high mode. Um, so again, it is totally maxed out. It does give you something to think about though, that it, depending on the title that you end up playing, you could end up with a awful lot of frames. We literally can't turn this game up anymore to the point that if you wanted to and you were into this, you could easily play this at 4K and have over 100 frames per second. Into the uh, graph though, and you again, you can pause, you can uh, digest. But don't forget, you can click through to the Overclock 3D website and see even more results. Okay then, so overall, I would say that the 1660 being a you know decent frame rate 1080p card, but also 
in reality giving you access to some uh, decent frame rates with 1440p other than the most stringent titles and in reality when it does come to things like Control and uh, Metro Exodus the new one um, they are very kind of Nvidia ray tracing focused games anyway Metro for example you absolutely cannot turn ray tracing off so uh, with that you would need and when we test, we test with everything on Ultra and turned up. So if you wanted to go to 1440p, you just need to make some very careful choices about turning some of the settings down to be able to bring your FPS back up again. Once you've done that and you realise you can't just run it on Ultra or, uh, you know, like Badass or whatever, and you just kind of notch it back a little bit, the performance will still be there. So it is still very 1440p capable with almost all of the games out there as long as you're a little bit sensible about it and you don't just think that you can fit it, turn everything to 11 and it's going to work. I will say though that based on AMD's price of 329 it does make this a bit of a sting at 500 But we do have to be a bit more balanced about this because I'm going to go straight away and kind of aim and look my sights on it being performing around the 3060 kind of mark. But when you think about the 3060 kind of mark, I've seen the 3060s being scalped online for ridiculous prices. I've seen them for over £700 at major e-tailers. So if you've got the choice between a 3060 being less than this, then I would probably pick a 3060 over this card. But if it was a 3060 more than this, then I'd buy this. The thing is, is you're going to have to be very kind of clever on the day and go around and see what prices of the cards are going to be. It, I'm kind of, I'm being put in a bit of a difficult position with this because it is going to be really expensive. I know there's going to be other models out there coming around at the uh, 375 mark. I know XFX is going to have a card that is going to be the £400 mark. I have tested the XFX. I'm not allowed to give you performance results for it today. I'm not even sure whether I should have mentioned it in this review. I have to give you the results tomorrow. So this one's on the 10th. I've got to wait 24 hours and I'm going to talk to you about the XFX on the 11th. So this one, it's very, very much got the wrong tax. It does just mean you've got to weigh up your options. There is no, oh, it's a Strix. Definitely go and buy it going to depend on the option you've got on the day for the cards that you can purchase. I don't necessarily think that the overclocks are going to be all that different because at the end of the day the cards all scream off into the distance and uh, overclock themselves while they're running anyway. This was consistently running between 2500 megahertz and 2680 megahertz. Uh, so the, the, it was overclocking itself all over the place and that's what they're designed to do. So the overclock additions don't necessarily bring a lot more to the table. It's the other little settings inside it uh, rather than the extended base clocks and stuff. Yes, this one was very cool. This one's got great power circuitry. It's a very well designed graphics card. It will last you ages. Some of the lower end ones may not be as built quite as well, may not have quite as much um kind of like toughness and durability but it depends on your budget and what you're searching for at this end of the market i would kind of assume that most people are just going to be looking for bang for buck i'm not sure this delivers the extra bang for your buck over what some of the smaller cards will have done so I, i'm giving you some very honest and open and uh, thought provoking results I like a Strix, I like this card. I do think it's about £50 too expensive though, if I'm completely honest. But that was based on one price that I was given from someone. We don't know whether they may come in a bit cheaper. I just know said retailer is meant to be listing it for £499. Based on that information, I think it's too dear. £449, you kind of, you've got that extra Asus-ness going on, an extra 50 quid over some of the others. Okay, a whole £100. And I have to say it, not necessarily a, a, any performance benefits. I, it just doesn't go. I think AMD have seeded the wrong cards this time, if I'm honest, because it's not particularly showing off the range that well. The SEP price and the promise of this kind of performance at, let's say, 
329 to 400 pounds I would be absolutely stoked about. This sort of performance around the 500 pounds mark, um, it, it's not got the same kind of shine and sheen to it. So my advice to you if you're watching this review of mine is go out and have a shop around because a card around the 400 pound mark or less, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be much more enthused about than this one. And I, 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 yeah, we're just gonna have to leave it there. So it's very good, it's great in the competition, you've definitely got high frame rates for 1080p, you've definitely got the access for most games at 1440p and with a few tweaks you can even play the AAA titles and the, the really intensive titles at 1440p as well. You just need to make sure that you don't pay too much for a card. Now I know that seems to be like a hallowed thing with the way that the market is at the moment, but hey, we have to live in hope. So. That is my review for now. I think this one's a little bit too expensive, but the thought of some of the others is rather great. So AMD, you're on to a winner. Asus, you need to maybe rethink some of the pricing or, I don't know, make it look a bit more exciting or something. Because I just don't think it quite delivered on the day for the price, especially when you consider a percentage markup based on the SCP. Uh, so that is my balance for you today. Not sure whether it's going to go down too well, but hopefully you found it useful. For now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.